Gritty Urban Saga. A special episode of Gritty Urban Saga. I'm going to attempt to show you guys how to cook a recipe of mine um, that I've pretty much just made up. Uh, this is comprised of uh, veal loin chop. You're going to need a veal loin chop, at least one. I have two here. I'm going to cook two of them. Very nice. Um, you're also going to need for this recipe um, some form of um, noodles. Uh, now, I've chosen to go with the uh, gritty cheesy skillets here. Um, the gritty cheesy skillets are very regional, though, um, so you might not be able to find this, this particular um, brand in your region. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry about that, if you can't. And then also I went with the gritty butter and herbed mashed potato. Now, this is not regional, but it's very seasonal. So um, by the time you see this video, these are probably out of season, so I'm, I'm very sorry, but I, I hear these are very nice this time of year, uh, so maybe next year. Um, now, I've placed these noodles from uh, the gritty cheesy skillets into, uh, into a pot, um, and they're soaking. Uh, they're not soaking for any particular reason. Um, I'm just I'm making a video here, so um, I placed them in here ahead of time. So don't think that that's part of the recipe, because it's not. Um, you're also going to need a big pan, okay? Um, being that I'm going to cook two uh, veal loin chops, I want, to, I want to cook them both at the same time. So... I don't want to have to go to a small pan, cook one, then cook the other one, and then that one's cold. I don't want to do any of that. So just get yourself a big pan. And then also you're going to need a foiled baking sheet. Um, foiled as in you put foil on it, not as in you've ruined its plans or anything. Um, so that's to keep your lamb chops warm. Uh, you're going to place this in the oven and then you know, put your lamb chops on them after they've cooked. That way you can make your sauce at your own leisure and you're not in a big rush. Um, also, you're going to need uh, some butter. You're going to need some, uh, it doesn't have to be whipped butter. It could be standard butter, that's fine. Um, and you're also going to need some olive oil. Um, I have some uh, organic garlic infused olive oil, um, but that's not part of the recipe. You can have any olive oil. Um, I'm just kind of fancy that way. Um, so, yeah, those are the ingredients that I'm going to talk to you about okay, right now. So I've extracted the, uh, the lamb from its packaging here. I placed it on a cutting board. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you guys are going to need a cutting board for this, so that's uh, right here. Now, I'm going to take the uh, gritty butter and herb mashed potatoes out of their packaging here. Now, it comes in a uh, very futuristic package, and uh, what you're going to do is sprinkle some of this onto your lamb, and then uh, just basically rub it in to where it's, it's actually sticking to it. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like here. All right, so you guys get an action angle here. So I'm going to sprinkle... A little bit of this onto there, onto each lamb chop, and then I'm just going to make sure that it's sticking. Um, so I'm going to kind of press it down. Um, you want to get rid of any areas that are a little bit too caked uh, because those areas um, will not cook the same. You want to even cook. So let's just spread that out a little bit. Let's make sure we get some on the sides. Now with any meat, you definitely want to wash your hands afterwards. <laughs> um, I also wash my hands before, because uh, um, you know I, I consider other people when I cook as well. <laughs> um, they probably don't want my germs, so definitely do that. Um, and make sure you keep separate cooking surfaces. Uh, treat all meats like they are, um, like they're infectious. You know, treat all meats like there's something um, bad that can happen if you touch it and touch something else, cross contaminate. Um, and that's the best way to do things. Because I've seen, uh, actually, saw a documentary recently where um, uh, a guy had actually eaten a piece of raw meat and uh, ingested a little bit of blood and then it actually attacked his uh, his system and uh, ended up dying. So you definitely want to make sure that you don't uh, don't put raw meats around anything else and don't cross contaminate. All right and then we're going to turn this over. I'm going to have to wash my hands quickly here so that way I can do a cut here and take you guys to the next step of this process. All right. Be somewhat quick about this. Turn this one over. And it's okay if it's not completely sticking on there. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to cake this whole thing with it, but we definitely want to coat it because um, it's going to add a lot of a lot of good flavor. And the reason I'm using the gritty butter and herb mashed potatoes here um, is because they're not just uh, they're not just regular. You know, they have they have some flavor. They have herbs and things in them, um, and that's going to add to the flavor of the overall um, you know, the overall finished product here. Um, so, I mean, you can probably use regular gritty uh, butter mashed potatoes if you want. Um, but this is just what I'm using. This is what I'm showing you guys. So, yeah, it looks pretty good there. It looks pretty good. Make sure it's 
a little over. Yeah, looks pretty good. All right, Let's put some on the side as well. And people are gonna eat the sides, so definitely add that. All right, so let me move this over here. Wash my hands before I touch the camera. going to the next part. What we're going to add to this pan is about a teaspoon. This is how I measure teaspoons. So, I mean, do what you will. Um, you're going to melt that to the pan. Uh, you're going to want your pan to be on about 60 to 70 percent of its, of its heat capacity. Um, so we don't want to burn this up. We just want to melt it right now. Um, we're also going to add some of our olive oil. Um, you just kind of want to eyeball it. Um, that's, that's at least what I do. So I'm going to pour a little bit of this olive oil in here. Um, that should be good for two of them. All right. Now, you're going to allow this to melt together. I'm not sure how well you can see that. But, yeah, you're going to allow these things to, to melt together. And you just kind of want to swirl them around. I'll show you how I do that as well. All right. Let's try this. You know, these are innovative camera techniques here, okay? This is something that's... Uh, it's going to be talked about for decades, I'm sure. All right. Now, I'm going to coat the whole pan with it. Um, and you can tell that uh, oil is hot enough in my, in my um, basically in, in my learnings here. Um, you want to make sure that uh, the oil is hot enough before you add anything to it. Uh, because you don't want things sitting there just warming through and not actually getting that caramelization on the outside that you're looking for. So um, the way you can tell in, in my expertise that uh, oil is hot enough is that it starts to look like water. It starts to flow like water. And because we've added butter to this, that might actually throw that off a bit. Um, but once it's, it's flowing enough to be watery, that's when you know you should be adding your, uh, your meats. All right, so we're going to do that right now. All right, so I think the heat is where it should be. Um, I've also started this, um, the uh, noodles, so they're going to be boiling pretty soon. Uh, so we're going to take our meat, a nice veal that we've coated here. We're going to add that to the pan. Yeah, that's what we want to hear. All right, and then we're going to add the other one here. Now, the secret to a good meat is to leave it on one side. Don't continuously turn it over and things like that. Um, because you're just, you're just going to mess things up as far as the caramelization. You definitely want to just have a timer. Um, so on this side, I'm going to leave it for three to four minutes, um, maybe a little closer to five, um, just so that I can make sure it cooks all the way through. And then I'm going to turn it once. Um, I'm also going to use the, um, the butter and the oil that we have in here. Uh, I'm going to swirl that around the edges uh, of the... Uh, of the meat here that way the sides cook as well a lot of people are only cooking the top and the bottom and then the sides are a little raw so I'm not gonna do that I'm going to use the butter and everything and I'm gonna swirl it around uh, kinda like the way water crashes into um, rocks at, at the beach just I'm gonna slash it into the uh, into the sides to make sure they cook as well um, I don't know how well I'll be able to demonstrate that but uh, let's try it alright so while this is uh, while this is cooking here I'm gonna go to my oven and I'm going to put it on bake. I'm also going to put it up to 225 degrees. Um, that way, um, when we do place these things after they're done um, cooking, we can place them in our oven and they will continue to cook through and they'll also stay warm while we do the sauce and things that I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do here. And, uh, okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. Uh, hopefully, it's a good camera angle for this, but you see how the I'm pooling the oil to one side of the pan here. Now as I can kind of move this around to the other side, I can make sure it hits the sides of it. And since that oil is so hot, um, it's actually going to cook the edges uh, of this of this lamb here. Um, and that's what we're looking for. Also because we've added the butter, it's going to give it such a nice browning and, and the flavor is going to be great as well. Um, so that's what I'm talking about when I say, um, you know, pulling it and, and hitting the sides of these things. And you want to kind of move it to the edge and then come down. That way it's actually hitting these things. Um, what I would normally do is I'll move it over to the edges, but I need two hands for that. Um, so I, I move the, uh, the lamb to the, side of the, um, to the side of the pan. That way when the oil comes up, it's actually hitting the whole side of this. So I'm going to do that here off camera. Um, keep in mind, none of this is, is like uh, 
real time like you shouldn't be cooking this to the times that you're seeing in this video because I'm cooking it for longer than it's showing here all right now our noodles are boiling here and uh, on the box for the gritty cheesy skillets here it says that uh, it's supposed to be eight to ten minutes that you let it boil um, and simmer so I've just brought it up to a boil and I'm probably gonna turn down the heat pretty soon here uh, that way it can just continue to, to cook through and uh, then we're going to add the ingredients that it says. So I'm going to show you guys how I, how I do that because this is a little bit different from the recipe on the uh, on the actual gritty cheesy skillet box. Um, so we're we're doing our own thing here. Um, yeah, I'm going to show you how I do that. Okay, first uh, before we do the the noodles here, we need to turn these over so we can uh, we can get the other side cooking now because uh, I believe they're done on this side. So let's see if we can do this one-handed without holding the pan let's see how how possibly dangerous we can be because you know danger is always good in cooking all right so I'm gonna hold the pan with this hand and see if I can get you guys a good angle on it all right all right so let's flip this over nice all right so as you can see here um, we've got a good browning good caramelization on one side um, definitely looks cooked uh, so that's really good I'm right, gonna flip this one if I can do that again. It's a fine art, okay? I must tell you. There you go. Very nice. So, as you can see, um, we left them on one side long enough. The uh, the bread um, breading that we've uh, concocted here, the uh, butter and herb, the gritty butter and herb mashed potatoes, it's definitely browned, um, and it just looks great. It's not burnt or anything. So I believe you know three or four or five minutes. You definitely want to eyeball it. Um, to see because different different meats different thicknesses are going to cook different ways so um, just kind of want to give yourself a, a leeway there to not say okay I'm going to cook this for three minutes and then you look at it and there's still you know <laughs> um, it's still bleeding and stuff like that you don't want that um, then you want to kind of press these down because there are um, crannies and things like that that are not going to get touched by heat and you want to flatten those out to where everything will get cooked evenly you don't want to have uh, you know raw spots um, now we're going to get on to the, uh, to the noodles, which I have turned down, so they're just at a, at a light simmer. Um, so we're going to get back to that. I, I did not mention this previously, but you're going to need yourself an oven mitt. Okay, This is a silicone oven mitt, so you're going to need one of these unless you just have hands of steel. And even then, I don't recommend it. Um, so just get yourself an oven mitt. And uh, we're going to drain these noodles now. Um, so we're going to take this over here. I'm going to pour out the excess water and then we're going to add some milk and some seasons to this in just a moment here as soon as I'm done with this. So I'll show you that in just a moment. Alright now I do have a strainer by the way but it's small and doing that with one hand is a little bit dangerous uh, so just I just decided to pour it out that way. Now I have a third of a cup of milk here. I'm going to add that. Alright. And because there's still some water left in there, I'm not, I would normally do like a half a cup or something, but I think a third of the cup will do well. And we're also going to add the gritty, uh, the gritty skillet seasoning here. Um, just, it adds a lot of flavor to this. I'm going to add that in here. Okay. And also, um, we're going to just stir that together, um, and then we're going to add our cheesy, uh, kind of like a, uh, I guess it's kind of like a sauce, a cheesy sauce that uh, comes out of a pouch here. Um, so we're going to do that. All right, so we have added the cheesy sauce there, and these are done now. So we need to put those onto our pan and place that in the oven. So we're going to see if I can do that with one hand here as well. All right. All right, there's one of them. Now we put both of those on this pan here. And now don't drain this pan. We're going to use that in just a moment here. Uh, let's take this, open our oven up, take this pan, place it in here. All right. We're going to leave that in there for the duration of what we're doing here. All right. So we're going to add this pot to uh, back to the heat and cook it just a little bit to thicken all that up. Uh, so that's what we're going to do here. Um, that's a little bit too hot. Place my silicone oven mitt on. I really like my oven mitt. Place this back on the heat. 
over our other pan a little bit. Alright. Alright. Now, we're going to let that heat up, and while we do that, you see all the stuff that's left in this pan here, the, the butter, the olive oil, the, the drippings from the uh, veal? We're going to use that. We're going to add a little bit of uh, red wine to that. Um, I have some, what did I get? I got some Cabernet Sauvignon, um, and I'm going to add that here. Uh, so I believe I'm going to add about a third of a cup of that, um, maybe two-thirds. Uh, let's find out here. All right, so instead of, uh, <laughs> instead of measuring this out, I'm just going to add it by eye here. Um, Probably pretty loud for you guys. Sorry about that, uh, but um, you definitely just want to reduce this down, uh, reduce it down until it's a little bit thicker. Uh, and make sure you scrape the bottom of the pan here. You want to scrape all this goodness because that's going to add to the flavor and make it so the sauce goes a little bit better with the actual um, veal um, because it's melded together at that point. I might add just a little bit more wine, and then also I'm going to add a taste. Uh, teaspoon, not a tablespoon, a teaspoon of uh, butter to this as well, um, just adds to the, the smoothness of it, it just makes it more silky, um, and that's definitely going to help you in your presentation here as well, um, so let me get my, let me get my butter here, I'm going to show you, nah, I'm not even going to show you that, just add a, add a teaspoon of butter, trust me. Alright, so I've added this, the, uh, the butter to that. And also, this is starting to uh, simmer a little bit, so we're going to start stirring that together. But before we do that, we're going to grab some uh, sage. We've got some uh, some gritty, gritty sage. Um, that is, you know, it, it's very hard to find. Um, it, I believe it only grows uh, in certain areas of the, of the Alps or something. I don't know. I, I'll have to do some research and get back to you guys. But anyway, so you want to have the gritty sage. Um, sprinkle some of that in here, because that's going to uh, add a earthy um, herbal taste to this uh, to this sauce you just sprinkle some in you don't need a whole lot because it's dry um, anything that's dry it's going to take less of that to, to give you the flavors that you're looking for um, put that back up here all right now we're going to start stirring together these ingredients over here all right don't worry if some of it gets stuck to the bottom of the pan here because uh, that's not it's not a problem at all um, that's just a uh, something that happens when you're not paying close enough attention to things um, but it's not going to affect your flavor too much um, unless it's actually burnt to the bottom and as you can see here it's not really burnt it's just it's just stuck there so um, we'll only be eating the noodles that aren't stuck so it doesn't really matter um, so we're going to put this together um, as you can see that's thickening, thickening up very nicely um, and that's what we're looking for definitely want some uh, good cheesy noodles along with this all right, so that looks pretty close to done, and our sauce looks done too. So we're going to turn this off, turn both of these off. Um, and then this sauce here, I'm going to rinse off my spatula first, but we're just going to stir this together a little bit, and then that's done. All right, so our heat is off, our noodles are done, and uh, we're going to take the veal out of the oven here. I'm going to try to do this one-handed. Put on my handy oven mitt. Alright. Open this up. As you can see, um, they've still been cooking in here at 220 and uh, 225 and they're just really nice looking now. Um, and put this over here. Get our oven mitt back onto the wall. I have a nice little pin for it that I have. And then uh, I'm going to take one of these they're, nah, they're way too hot to touch, so I'll try to extract one just using two hands here. It's proving a little bit difficult. All right, there we go. Now, I'm going to place one right in the center. Well, not in the center of the plate. We're going to place this off to the side here because we're going to be placing some of the, uh, the noodles on there as well. And then we want to, um, well... Yeah, I should probably just put the noodles on there right now as well. Let's get ourselves a scoop of noodles. Make sure we shake it a little bit so nothing falls on my stove. Alright. Got that here. And kind of clear the edges. I mean, it just makes it look nicer. Let's get a little bit more on there. Now you can add salt or pepper um, to taste, but I, I really think it tastes fine just by itself. And 
Then we're going to take our sauce that we've created here. I'm going to scrape some of this together. And get, a, get a little, what do we call this here? Alright, a spoon. Scrape some of the good herbs and, and drippings together before we pour any of this on. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Sorry, like I said, this is innovative um, camera techniques that we're using here. And then we're just going to pour a little bit of this onto our uh, veal, veal chop here. So, just eyeball this. That looks just about good. Alright, so now you have yourself a high class meal. Um, performed in the, the grittiest of ways. Uh, so um, I just kind of wanted to give you guys a, an outlook on how I make my veal lamb chops and uh, enjoy. Oh, and by the way, I am not claiming to be a master chef here. Um, this is just the recipe that I've come up with. Um, it's not something that uh, I'm claiming I went to culinary school or that you guys could, should cook just like me or I'm using the best techniques. Um, this is just my technique. So a uh, little disclaimer at the very end here, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Gritty Urban Saga.